name is Simyuk Shis and in this tutorial we're gonna have a look at how to create aliases in order to launch applications using our terminal. We'll have a look at how to create an alias for Nuke and other applications in all three major operating systems, Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Now why would you create an alias? This will simply speed up launching your applications. Now you might say that, well, I already have a shortcut for all my applications and that is totally fine, but creating an alias lets you not only launch these applications, but also launch them with a specific configuration using additional command line arguments, if your executable allows that. Now let's say for instance you would like to quickly launch Nuke in terminal mode. This is where aliases become powerful. So let's get started and have a look at how this works. First let's have a look at creating an alias in Linux. So let's launch our terminal and cd to make sure that we are in our user home directory. If we ls using the dash i flag, we'll see all folders and files of our current directory including the hidden ones. Now this is interesting because the file that we are about to edit is a hidden file. The file that we are interested in is called .bashrc. The leading dash indicates that this is a hidden file. Let's edit it directly in the terminal. For that we can use v .bashrc. Now in this file we can create an alias. An alias is nothing more of a shortcut for a certain command that we want to execute. Creating an alias is kind of similar to declaring and initializing a variable. Using the alias keyword we start creating a new alias. So alias and next we need to specify an alias name. This will be the short name that we will later use in our terminal. Now this name can be freely chosen and its naming rules follow the naming rules for variables in most programming languages. So for instance you must not use a white space in your variable name and no non ASCII character and also you cannot start with an integer. But other than that you are quite flexible in naming the alias anything you like. Let's create an alias for Nuke. So we call it Nuke. And next we need an equal sign. And now we need to specify what we want to do when we type in our alias and hit enter. In this case let's launch nuke. For that we simply need to specify the absolute path of our nuke executable. In my case this file lives in the root under user local. And let's for instance use nuke 10.5. But you can use any other nuke version as well of course. So let's simply jump into this directory. And in here we find the executable. Let's drag and drop it into our terminal. Now pay close attention to if your path contains white space. Usually it's a bad idea to have white spaces in any path and yes Windows does that by default. In order to make sure that this path works we can always wrap it around quotation marks. Just something to be aware of. Ok perfect. Next let's save the changes and quit from V using escape, colon and WQ for write quit. When we type nuke now and hit enter, we get an error. Our alias is actually not active yet. The last required step is to relaunch our terminal. So let's quit and relaunch it and type in nuke and hit enter. And this will now launch nuke. The nice aspect of this is that we are now able to launch nuke with any command line argument. Let's for instance say we want to launch nuke in terminal mode. All we have to do is typing in nuke-i-t. And we are in a nuke terminal session. Now I'll create a dedicated tutorial for using nuke in terminal mode and I'll post the link in the descriptions. Let's also create an alias for nuke 11. So let's go back to our bashrc file and create a new alias and call it nuke 11. And let's add the absolute path for nuke's executable. and write and quit and relaunch the terminal so that the changes become effective. And let's launch nuke using the nuke 11 alias and launch in terminal mode. Perfect. Let's have a look at how to create aliases on macOS. Ok so here I'm in macOS and the steps are actually exactly the same with the only difference that we need to edit a different file. In macOS we need to edit the .bash underscore profile document. So let's open our terminal and ls using the dash a flag to show all files. So here we need to edit the .bash underscore profile. 
This is again a hidden file. Let's do that. So v.bash underscore profile. And let's open our application folder and use any Nuke version in here. It doesn't really matter. Now, if you're a Mac user, you will probably know, but just to make sure that we are all on the same page here. Although it seems so, this.app file is actually not the executable. macOS packs app files as so-called application bundles. This file behaves more like a folder, although it doesn't seem so on the first look. What we need to do here is right-click and choose Show Package Contents. And here we need to navigate to Contents, macOS. And down here we can find the actual Nuke executable. So let's drag this file into the terminal and save our bash profile. And relaunch our terminal so that the changes become effective. Now let's type in nuke and nuke launches. Perfect. So let's also create an alias for a different application to see that this is not limited to nuke. Let's for instance create an alias for PyCharm. So let's go back to our bash underscore profile and create a new alias. Let's call it Py. And open our application folder and navigate to PyCharm. And again, we need to show the package contents and navigate to contents, macOS. And here's the executable. So let's drag this into our terminal. And here it's also some white space, but as long as we use quotation marks, we're fine here. So let's save and relaunch our terminal. And type in pi and hit enter. And this launches PyCharm. Finally, let's have a look at creating an alias using Windows. Now, as expected, Windows makes creating aliases overly complicated, and there are actually several ways in how to create aliases. The steps to create an alias require a little bit more setup. So, let's have a look at how to do that. The general procedure of how to accomplish this is that we need to create a batch file in which we can generate our aliases. Then we need to launch our command prompt and automatically execute this batch file to make all aliases available for us so that we can then use them. First, let's create an alias batch file. Let's navigate to our C drive and create a new folder and call it alias. And here let's create a new batch file using alias.bat. Alright, next we need to tell our command prompt to always parse this file when we launch our command prompt. To do that, let's search for our command prompt by clicking the Windows Start button and searching for command. Now, in my case, I have several other command prompts installed, so let me search for the full name cmd.exe. Although this is named command prompt, this is actually the cmd.exe file. Let's right click and choose open file location. And let's right click and choose properties and navigate to the shortcut tab. Now in the target field, we specify what to run when executing this command. In here we need to add a white space and then slash k and the absolute path of our alias batch file. Let me quickly launch another terminal drag in the file, select it and hit enter to get it into my clipboard. And let's paste the path in here and click apply and OK. Now in order to create an alias we cannot use the keyword alias in here but we need to use the keyword DOS key. Let's create an alias for nuke as well. So let's write DOS key nuke equals, and let's fetch the absolute path of the nuke executable. So let's navigate to C, Program Files, Nuke, and choose our version. And in here we find the executable. Let's open a command prompt and drag the file into it to get the absolute path. Select the path and hit Enter to store it on the clipboard. And let's switch to our batch file and paste the path. Perfect. Let's save the file and relaunch our command prompt. Now in here you see that our alias batch file will automatically be parsed. But we can also mute this line. 
Let's go back to our batch file and add add echo off at the top of the file. The batch file will now still be parsed when you open our command prompt, but the output will not be shown. Perfect. Let's try to launch nuke. And this works. There's only one downside. At this stage, we're not able to launch nuke using any command line arguments in Windows. Let's launch our command prompt and try to launch nuke in terminal mode by writing nuke-i-t. But this still launches nuke in interactive mode. Let's go back to our batch file. And in here we add dollar star, so the multiply character, in order to allow for further arguments and relaunch the command prompt so that our alias batch file will be parsed again. And perfect, this launches the terminal mode. So this was a quick tutorial of how to set up an alias so that we can quickly launch applications, even using additional command line arguments. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you do so, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to get news about new and upcoming tutorials. If you have any questions, please post them below and I'll try to answer them. And as always, if you would like to see a future tutorial about a specific topic, just let me know. Again, my name is Simon Yukushis and thanks for watching.